Thank you. So uh, t today I'm going to explore a new area that uh, I'm not so uh, familiar with. So uh, basically, this is a, a discussion about uh, what we know and what we don't know about uh, the preservation of the Chenjiang Bight. <laughs> of course, all of you know Chenjiang Bight really well. And as there is uh, one of the typical British shear type lag starter, it have an amazing biodiversity and exception of well-preserved soft tissues. And the why it is so well preserved, it has been a long uh, like a question being asked by many scientists uh, in the past uh, decades since uh, it discovered 1984. But uh, this uh, sort of question has been recently been more scrutinized, uh, particularly with some recent discovery of the uh, exceptional preserved laid by tissue from the Chenjiang Bight. So for colleagues and friends that know about me and my work in the past few years, I have been uh, particularly interested in looking into central nervous system from the, some Chenjiang Pan asteroids, as well as looking into their uh, cardio, uh, cardiovascular systems and there's, uh, and, and there's uh, some uh, visual systems from various different groups. All this uh, research work uh, has given me a lot of carrots, but also gave me a lot of sticks. Uh, admittedly, a lot of them has not been universally uh, accepted. And the, uh, the one of the a lot of criticized is come from the uh, decay experiment, because uh, various of the decay experiments show that uh, under controlled experiment condition, neural tissue and a lot of other anatomical tissues are particularly prone to decay process, so they are unlikely to be pr uh, preserved in fossil. And uh, what's really prompted me to give the talk today was early this year, I have a, a, another work criticizing uh, my previous research. And uh, this is uh, done by uh, the CN research group of uh, uh, leading by Liu Jianyi. So in their paper, they uh, show a bunch of the Fuxianghuya uh, specimens and uh, which is uh, randomly draw out some blobs uh, on the head and said that all these blobs are not neural tissue and uh, they are, should be the uh, uh, microbial decay. So to address that question, uh, first we have uh, 1,400 specimens in the, uh, uh, of the Fuxianghuya specimens in YKLP <coughs> and we systematically uh, studied them and a lot of specimens preserved in different condition and yes, a lot of them have uh, very stains, black, brown, etc. But uh, I, I do not randomly just pick up some uh, blobs and interpret as the uh, neural structure. And I will explain a bit further later. But also more frustrating for me was uh, uh, this paper uh, claim it is uh, preserved as a microbial, uh, uh, like sort of biofilm. But yet throughout the whole paper, there was no single evidence of the um, microbial microbes on the uh, preservation of these uh, sort of dark stain structures. And there is uh, no morphological uh, uh, evidence, and no uh, microbe cell body, no filament. There is no geochemical evidence. So all their evidence is largely uh, we, um, supported or they uh, cited uh, some other people's decay experiment. And such, uh, this is one of the uh, decay experiments uh, done by Adon and his colleagues. And they show that there's uh, um, endogenous microbes uh, inside the gut um, uh, sort of played a key role in terms of the decay process and also preservation. But at the same time, you have uh, some other um, sort of decay experiment to show that uh, microbial mass in the early fossilization, uh, which is uh, uh, sort of very important because they have a played as a replicate of the various structures or pro help protect the uh, uh, structure. So it seems that like a decay experiment is very important, and uh, uh, but at the same time, we still have a long way to go. Then there, I was very happy <laughs> to recently uh, saw this sentence in uh, Mark Pennell and the friends of the Rotten's. And basically, I quite agree is the fossil do not falsify the experiments, and the experiments do not falsify the anatomical interpretation of the fossils. But what we really need is uh, to, uh, <coughs> re oh, uh, the, to reduce the gap in our understanding between the decay experiment and the fossil, and essentially help us to understand exactly what's been preserved in fossil and how they were being preserved. 
So I try to have a, a bit more positive uh, spin on it and uh, to uh, explain some of my current understanding about the preservation of the Chengjiang specimens. And the uh, first thing I really want to emphasize is the variation in preservation in Chengjiang fossil. Uh, using the Fuxianhuya, this asteroid as example, we have some specimens like this, which is beautifully preserved, but they are show entirely exoskeletons and without any internal structures are show. But at the same time, from the uh, so-called background bed, we have the Fuxianhuya specimens, the old exoskeleton almost decayed away but the one single organ systems <coughs> inside of the body been preserved. <coughs> and there's an also many hundreds of thousand other specimens that show very degrees of the preservation. And uh, they, some of them show exoskeleton, some of them show the gut, and uh, show the appendages, very so. so. The variation of the preservation is likely caused by the variation of the different uh, decay status. So clearly, so for this specimen, it has been through a longer decay process. But in, except the, uh, the decay, uh, the, the extent, how much degree of the decay happened, but it's likely also about the sequence of decay, which is such as in this one, uh, why it was uh, the exoskeleton supposed to be more resistant to decay process, was looks like it being decayed away, while some internal structures are preserved. So, the, um, but there of course is another criteria to help uh, uh, us to understand this biological structure rather than random taphonomical artifact. Uh, you know, one of the key features is a bilater uh, bilateral symmetry. As most of the specimens we study here are bilaterians, so bi bilateral symmetry is the fundamental uh, features <laughs> for, for all the organism. And there, this uh, is once again using Fuxianhuya brain structure as an example. So this is, uh, uh, no, this is not Fuxianhuya, this is a glass shrimp of the uh, modern taxa. And we show this is the brain structure with the pair of the nerve tract come out of the brain, and which is leading into the uh, eye stalks and also various uh, <coughs> appendages. And uh, this is uh, our uh, initially described as the brain structure from the Fuxianhuya. And as you see here, this is the front part of the head of the Fuxianhuya. And inside of the head capsule, you have this uh, perfect bilateral symmetric uh, um, lobe uh, morph uh, structure, duct staining. And then you have a pair of the nerve tract come out of it. And which, if, if you follow it, is extended into the eyes and the antennae. And it's except the bilateral symmetries shown in this one. They also, this is the LCM EDX map, and they also show as a, a distinct of the uh, element difference. And once again, it's a very sort of clear, uh, clear boundary between the structure itself and the surrounding um, uh, tissues. So yeah, so uh, of course, uh, when you only have uh, one single specimen, it's always uh, very frustrating for paleontologists. And uh, then it's helpful when you can find multiple specimens to supporting your original interpretation. And uh, in this case, uh, yes, uh, we've been through 1,400 specimens of the Fuxianhuya propensa, but uh, only 10 specimens uh, that I have found have a sort of uh, likely to be neural uh, trace remain on the head. And as you see some of the specimen here, the neural trace on the head region preserved in various different degrees of uh, decay afterward. But uh, nevertheless, when you trace it, all of them have this uh, perfect uh, bilateral symmetry. And uh, when you uh, uh, put all the trace of this neural trace together, they perfectly uh, correspond to each other. And once again, that is supporter of our int original interpretation about its uh, neural structures. And then also, like some uh, um, another thing to help us was uh, when you see things repeatedly occurred at the same location on the uh, animal body, shows the same structure, same profile, uh, and the same size. And uh, here, such as uh, when we interpret about the uh, optical neuropil inside the Fuxianhuya eye. So this is uh, the eye stalk of Fuxianhuya. And repeatedly in different specimens, you see those uh, sort of round structures uh, preserved in dark stain uh, color. And they repeatedly uh, occurred inside of the eye stalk. And in the similar location of the eye stalk, 
and they're in the same the round profile in the same the size. And uh, all, when you, uh, so those sort, of, uh, those sort of features gave me confidence to interpret it as a true biological structure. And uh, uh, when you make a comparison with the living taxa, such as this one is from uh, living crayfish, uh, then I can sort of confidently to interpret these structures is likely the trace remains of optical neuropils inside the eye of the Fusianghuya. But of course, it's also even more helpful when you can look into more detailed structure of them. So this is uh, some, some fire, uh, more detailed information was provided by EDX uh, map. And this is a close up EDX map of a one, uh, two of the optical neuropils inside of the Fusianghuya eye stalk. But the very interestingly, when I look at it, it's quickly noticed there's some like a parallel uh, bands between the, uh, this uh, uh, cluster and the second cluster. And those sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, parallel bands make it a um, clear correspondence, uh, very similar to the axon bundles, which is a comprising optical chiasma, which is that you often see in the living crustaceans, such as the ones, this is the modern examples. So this is uh, uh, some of sort of from the, some criteria that we have been using, try to uh, identify it is a true biological structure, but not a, a taphomical um, artifact. But also at the same time, of course, we want to understand exactly how and why uh, uh, they've been preserved. And uh, this is some of my early research I present before that uh, by looking, uh, I've been used, I tried some of the uh, decay experiments but uh, recently, uh, I have uh, much more focus on geochemical uh, analysis. And uh, this is uh, some uh, my uh, research shows that uh, various uh, specimens, I mentioned about the variation, except the, uh, sort of uh, within the same taxa, but even within the same tissue. So we have like an all neural tissue inside of Fusianghuya, but some of them being preserved uh, as like a uh, dominated uh, carbonaceous film and you only show up as a sort of only carbon signal, but there is no iron. And there, in those cases, likely this original lay by tissue has been preserved as a carbonation film. And due to the limiter of the sulfite in the uh, sediment, the sulfate reducing bacteria were not able to con consume those uh, carbon. And hence, they were able to be uh, preserved until today. And in some other specimens, uh, also neural tissue, but we have the mixed signal between the carbon and the iron. And in this case, I propose that the uh, iron uh, uh, pyritization was able to proceed uh, when some of the sulfate available. And that, uh, but uh, this process was stopped when all the sulfate in the sediment was uh, uh, consumed. But also uh, in some other, also another uh, neural structure in the Alacomenius, another, uh, but in this case, the whole neural structure was entirely replaced as a pyrite, uh, as an iron signal. And in this case, it's likely that the uh, pyritization was only ceased after all the organic matters are exhausted. And uh, this is uh, shows that uh, even the <coughs> same tissue uh, from the same taxa or similar taxa from the same locality, they can be preserved uh, differently. But uh, the primary, the uh, uh, primary uh, taphonic model, it is the same as like uh, uh, cuticles and other skeleton. They were preserved as a carbonaceous film first, and then secondary, when the condition allowed, they have a pyritization uh, happened and which is uh, make them in different degrees of uh, prioritization. And that's why we say difference of the iron carbon. But uh, that's also another thing very no uh, interesting was uh, I have been looking a lot, a lot of uh, Chenjiang Huoso, but I never seen the carbon uh, or carbonaceous film preserved in the uh, like so exoskeleton of the uh, fossil uh, asteroid or out external structure. All the carbon remaining that uh, I have been observed from Chenjiang material either from like a cardiovascular system, around the gut, around the neural structure, around inside the eyes. So it's all internal structures. So that's here, uh, it still puzzles me. Uh, what is the process, what is the sequence? Why, uh, why is only internal structures are uh, left with the carbonaceous uh, film? 
So maybe it is uh, the prioritization was happened from external uh, structure towards internal structure. I don't, I, I don't have answer, but that's some observation I have. But nevertheless, uh, because we do have a various of the carbonaceous film uh, preserved in Chengjiang, so so far the ones I showed you are all in the element uh, carbon element. Oh God. <laughs> so, so okay, I have to quick. Uh, so, so basically, uh, my interest was to try to look into is there any possibility to find the molecular uh, structures inside these uh, carbonaceous remains, and uh, in collaboration with Johan Lindgren, we have uh, used the uh, uh, topsing technique and been looking investigated the uh, molecular remains, and uh, to our uh, delight, we found that. Uh, well, Regardless of primary source of these anatomical features, all of the carbonaceous matters in the Chengjiang Bite are um, dominated by uh, polyaromatic or aliphatic uh, hydrocarbon. And uh, we uh, conclude that uh, those uh, uh, polymer uh, polymerization is likely, or the molecular transformation is likely play a key role for the long-term survival of this carbonaceous material in the Chengjiang Bite. But that didn't address that how they are allowed to be preserved at the first place. So this is another work in collaboration with my colleague back in China as a geochemist. And we were looking into redox conditions of the Chengjiang bed. And noticeably, we have the event back and the background bed. And the background bed is uh, indicated the pelagic deposition uh, into deep water, while the event bed is likely to is a faster, dep uh, faster deposited uh, storm generated bed. And there, uh, uh, in the fossil, um, in both the preservation condition and the composition are very different in both event bed and background bed. And I don't uh, go into much more detail now. Um, but uh, basically, for the first time, we had a most complete call from the Chengjiang Bite from Jinning section, allowed us to do direct, uh, very high resolution redox condition analysis on, uh, and make a comparison between event bed and the background bed. And uh, our, uh, I'm very quick. <laughs> so so uh, I straight jump into conclusion. That's uh, helped me to difficult to explain the geochemical there. But uh, basically the uh, take home message is uh, our research shows that a deep water environment, which is uh, the, uh, the background bed and the indicator of the, uh, uh, the, deep uh, the deep water environment and likely to be desoxic. And the wire the uh, uh, event bed indicate a predominant of the oxic environment. And the adjacent of this two sharply redox condition environment and it's likely contributed to the exceptional preservation of the Chengjiang Bight. But the exception of the uh, sediment, but like I mentioned, there was a uh, fossil composition difference as well. And except that uh, the redox condition contributed to difference of the uh, preservation, but they also contributed to the distribution of the uh, communities. And even bed and background bed actually have uh, two different uh, paleo communities, uh, which is uh, uh, Sponge is more dominated in the background bed, while the uh, uh, like sort of uh, brachiopods as a uh, benthic uh, animals are not exist, uh, not, not found in the background bed. So yes, sorry, just I'm very, uh, I'm not reading my conclusion, but uh, anyway, thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs>